Hello, people. We are on episode nine of the Creators Club. Today, we are chatting with Kira Harper. It's going to be a good one. Stay tuned. Today's guest, Kira Harper, is a dancer, teacher, and choreographer whose womanliness has taken her career around the globe. Today, she's here to take the heels off, sit down, and give us a female perspective on the dance industry. Hello and welcome back to the Creators Club where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. Today I am joined by the extraordinary dancer, choreographer, and teacher Kara Harper. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. I've been trying to get you in an interview for like a minute where you were traveling on a teaching tour. For sure. Let's Tell me about that. How was that experience? Um, well, it was my very first teaching tour. I set it up all on my own. Um, I just kind of found that through my DMs, I kept getting requests. Can you come to my city? Can you come to my city? But nobody was providing me, you know, the access to the city. So I just said, well, let me just do it myself. And I went home to New York for the holidays and said, well, let me just hit up the entire East Coast. Um, from there, I went from New York to Philly to D.C., Maryland, to Chicago, to Atlanta, and then back to New York again, and then back to L.A. So so if you recall, not too long ago, we actually had a conversation about how a lot of people um, want to ask, ask for, for handouts, mm -hmm. and they want to know how to, you know, put me on to this, put me on to that, and I love that you just mentioned how, like, you set that tour up yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let's just dig a little bit into the idea of, um, creating your own opportunities and not necessarily being that person that's out here looking for for handouts. So talk to me about like what your experience has been with with those type of situations. Um, well, through my Instagram, Instagram is basically my main source of communication with the fans or people that want to come take my class and students and whatnot. So I get a lot of messages where they ask me, um, hey, how did you start doing this? I want to do this too. Who do I talk to? What do I do? And my thing is, I could very well easily tell you how to do it all. Right. But nobody was really telling me how right. to do it all, you know. Um, they've showed me the ropes. I definitely have mentors that have helped guide my, you know, my steps. Right. But no one ever really gave me the answers. And it's because I personally believe that when you seek out the answers on your own, they stick with you longer and you learn more. Absolutely. Um, I find that when I give the answers to people, that kind of goes in one ear and out the other, and then they're asking for more and asking for more, and then they never seem to really progress and get ahead on their own. Absolutely. So it's kind of like raising children, I think. <laughs> you have to really learn how to find things out on your own. Do your research on your own, and you will push yourself further in your career, I think. Mm -hmm. I think just from my own experience, yeah. of course. But um, you push yourself further in your career when you figure things out on your own yeah um i've had girls message me asking me hey i want to teach a class how do i do it and i want to fly to this school and teach there but they're you're asking me but mm -hmm. you're not hitting up the school mm -hmm. and asking them how do i come to you so that they can get you there or you right. can figure out a plan for yourself yeah it's so, like go straight to the source yeah you know <laughs> and, and i think the reason why people do that is because, you know, the, the industry in the world today is, I like to call it the microwave industry. Everything mm. is at your fingertips. And the minute you wake up, you start scrolling and mm -hmm. you can get information. So people think it's just okay to just, well, let me just ask and get it. Right. Instead right. of going out and getting it and doing the work and thinking outside of the box and making yeah. sure that you become a staple in the industry rather than just another mark. A lot of people look at that kind of work and look at it yeah. as if it's lame. Like, right. People should be contacting you. Da, da, da. Why? Why do? You, but no, you literally need to create your opportunities you by whatever means necessary. Somewhere. Exactly. There you mm -hmm. go. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. So speaking of starting, I guess this can be your 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 one time and all answer for all the people that are asking you how you did it. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, just kind of taking us through like what's your story? What got Kira Harper to LA today? Ooh. <laughs> well, um, I actually. I was assisting my mentor at the time, Luam. Mm -hmm. Not even at the time, but still mentor now. Um, very close with her. And we were coming to L.A. to work on a project with her. Um, the project happened to fall through, but we ended up going anyway, just mm -hmm. to kind of train. And um, while I was there, I met a lot of great people. It was about three days. And 
within those three days, I had just made a goal. You know, I want to get signed in Los Angeles. Everyone mm-hmm. told me I couldn't do it, which means I'm going to do it. Right, you know? right. So I went, I got signed to clear within three days. Everyone said it was impossible and I knew that I could do it. Yeah. Um, after that, I met some people at a bar one night that I knew danced with at the time Beyonce. Okay. And um, on that night that we were leaving to go back to Los Angeles, I got a phone call and said, hey, we saw you at the bar and I just want you to know where are you right now? And I ended up booking Super Bowl that night. Oh, okay. So um, after Super Bowl, I ended up staying in Los Angeles. I got off the plane from going back to lot to New York, stayed in LA, did Super Bowl, and then was like, well, you know what? If I could do all of this in right. a matter of a week, what could I do if I stayed here longer? Right. So after Super Bowl was over, I called up a friend and was like, hey, can I sleep on your couch? Right. And I stayed there for about a month and tried to meet as many people as I could. I ended up working. I ended up doing music videos. And um, I just knew this is where I was supposed to be. Yeah. At that point, you know, you kind of get a feeling like, yeah. th- this is right and this is right. You yeah. know? So that's kind of how I got to L.A. And then once I started, um, I was teaching in New York Heels. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I got to L.A., I was like, it's missing here. You know, you mm-hmm. have your, your standard teachers. You have the Aisha and the Andy and the Siennas. But I knew that I had something else to offer. Mm-hmm. I knew that my style was a little different, and I knew that I saw things in a, in a different way. And because I was still in the industry as a dancer, my perspective could be valued. Okay. So, um, you know, being a newbie, you can't just go teaching at Debbie Reynolds and Movement Lifestyle on right. your own. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. And if f- four people come, two people come, I will teach those two people. And I did. I just started renting out space at Evolution Studios, and within my my first class, I had about 20 people come. I remember that, yeah. And I was like, oh, people do want to hear what I have to say, so I just kept doing it, kept doing it, and now today, I'm subbing at Debbie Reynolds, I'm subbing at Movement Lifestyle, I'm teaching all over the country, Mm -hmm. just because I decided to stick to it, and I I stayed true to who I was, and why I'm here and the message that I wanted to share. Yeah. Um, I love that you mentioned that, um, you know, you said, like, come into L.A. as a newbie. Like, no, you're not going to just jump in and all of a sudden be at these, the mm-hmm. bigger studios, you know, right. with your own spot teaching classes. And I do know that, like, I'm not a teacher, but I do know that what comes with being a teacher is you have to build that following and right. that loyalty of students that want to come back and learn from you. And um, I'm touching on this because you said, you know what, I did it myself. I rented mm-hmm. my own space, and if two people come, great. But if more, you know what I mean? Right. So I'm mentioning that because I think that a lot of people get discouraged coming into a new city, period, mm-hmm. because of stuff like that, where they're like, I'm new, nobody knows me, nobody's going to care, and nobody thinks, you know what? If I want to build this brand or reputation or, or, or you mm-hmm. know, or build a following, i got to start right. somewhere. And if that means I have to do it myself and rent my own studio and, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff, then so be it. And I think... um that type of discouragement is what stops people from even trying to come to new right. cities or, you know what I mean? And then you look around and it's been two years you've been in this new city and you've been mm-hmm. in the same spot because you've been too afraid to start. Absolutely. So I love, I love that you said that. Um, speaking of New York, so I'm really interested to know your, your perspective on just like, what do you see as far as the industry goes? What have you noticed differences between like the New York dance community versus the LA dance community? Um, uh... Let me say this. I, I really believe that the reason why New York is what it is versus L.A. is what it is mm-hmm. um, is because the amount of opportunities provided in New York are significantly less than the amount of opportunities provided in L.A. Right. So your level of experience is, um, I feel like, it's lower amongst the majority of dancers Mm -hmm. rather than the specific dancers that always work the jobs. Gotcha. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, In LA, there's far more dancers, yes, but far more opportunities for dancers to learn how to act on a job as far as professionalism is concerned and preparedness and um, your training. Also, Mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely training opportunities in New York, but there's, three times more classes in LA for you to take. Right. So um, I, I really believe that in New York, the hunger in New York is immeasurable. Like mm. 
the the dancers there are so hungry and they just want it so bad and um because there's so little that comes there although it is growing now right but because there's so little that comes there they they want it way more mm. um in LA <laughs> there's so many opportunities that things for dancers become kind of like uh, an everyday routine gotcha you know gotcha. you can you can say, oh, I'm not going to go to that audition. There'll be another one tomorrow. Right, right. Whereas, Whereas in New York, in you can't York, do that. You, you like, you need to be going to any and everything. Because <laughs> you never know when you're going to have another opportunity in yeah. New York. You know, I remember there was a time in New York where I went to one audition a month, if that. Yeah. In L.A., two to three times a day sometimes. Right. You know, and or four to five times a week mm -hmm. you'll have auditions. It's just different. Yeah. There's more opportunity for you to learn. and But... What I do see also is in New York, yes, the dancers are more hungry, and yes, there's a lot of talent, but I feel like the level of work ethic in New York can be lower sometimes yeah. because people get way more discouraged mm. because there's not that many there's not many opportunities for them to hone in on the talent that they do have. I agree. You know, there's not many people coming there to help them grow and give new people and chances. nurture their talent yeah. that they do have you know and people i feel like in new york people don't realize the level of potential that they have i agree with that you i know? totally agree with that in la you can you can see it and then you make a choice whether or not you want to push on it or not but mm -hmm. um i think my heart is with new york mm -hmm. all the time and i know so many talented people there but so many talented people that feel like you have to do things a specific way in order to get to where it is you want to go. And yes. I feel like it's holding a lot of New York back. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, speak, yeah. Well, speaking on that, that's exactly what I think. I think, um, well, first of all, I think that the fact that there's significantly more jobs in L.A., um, is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because like, people get comfortable and they're yeah. like, mm, something will roll around next week. But I think it's a great thing because I forget who I was talking to years ago, but they had mentioned that because there's so many jobs in um, LA between um, music, film, commercial, TV, everyone's able to find their place if you right. work hard enough. Everybody can right. find their place in this industry. You don't have to, whereas in New York, because like there's not as many jobs, we, we constantly have to go to auditions, even if we're like, I'm not even interested in that, right. but I need a check. Right. Whereas in LA, you kind of can say, you know what? I really want to focus on TV jobs mm -hmm. right now versus like... Uh, music videos or tours. I want right. to stay put and I want to find a, a long-term TV job like Lip Sync Battle yeah. or when Glee was out, like something that's dance, but still, but stationary yeah. and put. So I feel like that's where the pro is. Mm -hmm. But I do think that it, 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 it has its cons in the aspect of people do get a little comfortable in, in the fact mm -hmm. that there are so many jobs. But that being said, going back to New York, what do you think is stopping people from, um, like everyone, I feel like everybody has this like, this like idea of like wanting to be loyal to New York and I'm not going to leave. Everybody leaves. Right. But it's like, when do you start thinking about what's best for you, your career and your life actually progressing? Mm -hmm. So what do you think is stopping people from, um, you know, even if they come and visit for two months or three months and then go back and then, but it's just like the reality of the industry. The reality of the industry is that 90% of the jobs are here. Right. So it's like, what do you think is stopping people from testing the waters? Is it fear? Yeah. I think it is fear under, you know, it's an underlying fear mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but people, people look at Los Angeles and New York and I know I'm guilty of this too. At one point in my life was like, it's just so far away. Mm -hmm. It's just so far away. It's just so much I need to do before I can get there. And it's like, no, yeah. if you want to do something, then do it. You want to go down to Atlanta and train under Sean Bankhead? Then get your ass down to Atlanta yeah, and figure it out. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of starting. And I think because New York is so accustomed to waiting for the job to come, mm -hmm. they feel like you have to wait before you're ready mm -hmm. in order to do more. Yes. And I feel like a lot of times people don't realize that you're already ready. Mm -hmm. You're already there. Yeah. But you're, they're so accustomed to waiting around and waiting for the opportunity to show its face right, right. that going out and getting the opportunity is so scary and it seems it seems um impossible to do i agree with that you know yeah my perspective on that is that like exactly like i've noticed that like whenever i see like 
New York dancers come out here, it's because, oh, this choreographer that taught in New York recognized me and told me to come. Yeah. So now I'm going to come. Right. Or Taylor Swift's having a huge audition. Now I'm going to fly out. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's like they wait for it to show itself. Right. But it's that, it's that right there. It's like, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm ready. And it's like with any job, right, whether it be corporate, whether it be in the industry as a dancer, you learn as you go. It's like you said, there's more jobs here that will are for a first timer or for right. a newbie to get on it and be like, okay, now I understand how to do this better the next time mm -hmm. or do that. And I think that people automatically think that, not think, but want to come here and jump right into a tour right. or a major production and forget about the fact that there's still so much you have to learn mm -hmm. and you don't have to know it all right away. Right. But sometimes you feel like choreographers play a role in making people feel like they have to know it all before they come. I think each choreographer is different. Mm -hmm. You know, you have some choreographers that really give back and say, no, you need to be prepared this way. But you also have to think about the, where the, the way the industry is shaped now versus back then. Mm -hmm. Back then, the working choreographers were the people teaching class. Right. You know, right. nowadays, it's not necessarily the same thing. No. So back then, you know, the industry was shaped around taking class because who you were in class was taught to be who you would be on the job. Right. You know what I'm yes. saying? And nowadays, it's not that. Yeah, because it's not necessarily working there's a, dancers. There's a gap and yeah. a disconnect between the, the classroom space and the working space. Mm -hmm. So the classroom etiquette is not necessarily the same thing now as it would be on a job. Right. Being on time to class is not the same as being on time for the job. Right. You know, mm -hmm. how you work on a job, the type of, the different things, like how to transition without bumping into an artist and all that stuff is was taught in class. Yeah, now it's not at all. And now it's not because the people who are working the jobs don't even have the time. Mm -hmm. Or it, it, it's unfortunate, but they really don't have the time because of the amount of work that they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. You know? And then also you look at the industry now, a lot of class is for social media. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different realm today. Absolutely. So the level of dancer is completely different. You know, the style of dancer is completely different. Mm -hmm. A class a class dancer is different from a working dancer. Just the way that their intentions are behind the movement is completely, right. you know. And I think, I'm saying that to say that in New York, you do one thing. You take class. You go audition for a job, whatever the job is. You don't ever really get a chance to figure out who you are. Yeah, I agree. You don't get that opportunity. You come to L.A., there's so many different things that you can do, and you can learn, like, okay, am I gonna be? Am I good at taking class and being on video and being Instagram? Mm -hmm. Am I good at um, commercials? Am mm -hmm. I good at... You find your niche way easier right. here, but I think in New York, you get one opportunity a month, you think that's your opportunity and that's all you got. Right. So you don't really get the chance to branch out and figure out exactly who you are right. unless you have that switch turn on in yourself right. and say, you know what, I want to try this. Mm -hmm. People in New York, I feel like, are a little more afraid to do so because you don't, you have so much more to lose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's more, there's not, there's not that much coming to you, so you have more to lose because Am I going to eat this month or not? Right. Am you I going to pay my rent this month or not? It is yeah. a big issue. Yeah. Um, I love how you just talked about, I think, like in LA, how, like you said, when you're in classes, you kind of can maneuver and be like, you know what? Do I, do I shine more when I'm on mm -hmm. camera or when mm -hmm. it's this type of class or that kind of class? And I think that that's a big thing that a lot of dancers don't take advantage of. Yeah. Is really recognizing, am I more, am I more comfortable when it's a class that's being filmed? Am I more comfortable when it's this teacher that's teaching more of a uh, live tour mm -hmm. style? Yep. Am I more comfortable when it's more um, emotion in yep. the class and using that to uh, bringing that into your career? Right. Because it's like if you're a type of dancer where it's like you shine the most when that camera comes out, you should be looking at commercial work. Like I said, being more on TV yep. platforms versus like trying to be, I can't think of an example right now, but you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's another thing. But like you said, I feel like because there's just not a variety of teachers or those different type of experiences happening right. in New York, people can't really figure out which way to go. Yep. But that's why I feel like people need to stop being afraid to come where 
that is, where right. they can find those opportunities to learn and grow mm-hmm. and get work experience. Even if it's just for a short amount of time, right. like right. come for the summer, right. train. Yeah. The same way you train hard in New York, mm-hmm. you can come here and train here. You just have to be smart about where you're, who you're training with. Right, right. Because there's way more options. Absolutely. You know what I mean? For you to get lost in, but why not take every single class so that you know what you don't like? Yeah. That way you get closer to what it is that you do like or what you do shine in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think I love New York. I really think New York has so much talent and it gets so overlooked. Yeah. But the industry is here mm-hmm. and it sucks. Mm-hmm. It really does suck. But I think New York has to be a little more open-minded to just coming out and doing what they got to do so that people know, like, nah, she's from New York. She's not from L.A. Mm-hmm. Or, no, he's he's from New York. All these people from New York, for real? Maybe we should go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to go get the people and say, hey, for instance, for me, as a teacher, I sub classes. And it's at a point now where I'm subbing every week for the same class. Mm-hmm. Why isn't it that... I've been asked to be the permanent teacher yet. Right. You know what I mean? But in my head, it's not, oh, they just don't want me. No, you're calling me every week to come sub. You want me. You want me. (laughs) So let me show you why you need me. Right. Get every single person in that class, at the end of my class, to go to the front and say, I want her to be my teacher permanently. Sometimes you got to wake people up. Sometimes people are sleeping on you. And I think the industry is for sure sleeping on New York City. Mm -hmm. But New York can't just be waiting around for people to wake up. I was going to say, let's talk about what we feel like New York is doing wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? We could turn it into positives in the end, but mm-hmm. it's like, what are the things? I think that's number one. People are waiting for the opportunities to present yeah. themselves before they act upon things. Mm-hmm. I think two, um, I think New York is always following the leader. Yeah. And I say that in the sense of like, um, you know, LA made the whole video thing in class, like the more cinematic style video thing in class, like big. Mm-hmm. And... It wasn't until after that that New York was like, all right, let's do that too. And this is no shade or disrespect to anyone that does the the videography and filming in New York. I'm just saying that I think there needs to be more innovative thinkers who can come up with what New York can do first. Does that make sense? Versus like, oh, that's working in LA. Let's do it over here. Because it always looks second to, you know what I mean? Mm Because it's like, you can tell. So I think that that's what's missing. I also think that when I do look and I do watch um, New York class videos, first of all, not not enough teachers are... Um, doing high quality production in their classes mm-hmm. and I think that that's where we fa- fail to compete with LA when it comes to the YouTube space that's just yeah. one but two when I do see class videos from New York I feel like I still see the same thing I saw when I moved to New York eight years ago yeah. people in big dingy t-shirts and girls that you can't even tell are girls and mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's just like as much as it sucks yeah. right that's the industry like you just said that's the industry today it's like when you're in class you need to look like Mm-hmm. You're on stage or already in that commercial. You know what I mean? I just or on or the just job. Just be really yourself. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? So, and that doesn't necessarily mean there's a specific formula to how you take class. Mm-hmm. I really don't believe that because okay. there's some dancers. I know some dancers who say you need to have a full face when you walk into the room. You need to do this. And then I know some women who take class in a bare face mm-hmm. and still slay, but still look like women right you know what i'm saying okay. so i think it's more so about being so unapologetically yourself that you shine yes you know yes. and not just hiding mm-hmm. i think yes new york follows suit because if the industry is turning this way then yes you need to turn Absolutely. otherwise you're going to get left behind Absolutely. for sure but if we're gonna follow suit then follow suit and go beyond yes yes you know what i'm saying so, like, as, as far as production and class production and video production is concerned, you know, you have people like Zuri who are insane, mm-hmm. amazing videographers, cinematographers, whatever you want to call it, insane. Why not utilize his gift to the fullest of his potential? Right. You know what right. I mean? Why just settle for an in out mm-hmm. when you know he's the bomb mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying absolutely why not go for more than just if you're gonna do a production or you're gonna do a a concept video and i say that with quotations mm-hmm. but um why not go above and beyond right, right. i'll piggyback off that so it's like i think a big thing that i see a lot especially coming from new york is like people will hire zuri who's great which we already established but they'll like have him shoot them in ripley greer yeah that's and it's what just I'm like saying. that's a w- I, personally i feel like that's a waste of what he can really do yeah you know what i mean like if you're gonna shoot a content video go balls to the wall some of the stuff i've been seeing from choreographers out here 
they're shooting like movies yeah. with their stuff. Like they're going there. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's like we can argue back and forth about like, okay, our content videos played at this point, but I do think that there are still some individuals that are taking it to the next level. Yeah. And I'll use Hollywood for example, right? Like he was kind of, in my opinion, other than like stuff I was seeing from like Brian Poospoos in Eastwood back in the day, he kind of revived the idea of like instead of waiting to get the music video, I'm gonna shoot a music video. Right. And, and now you know what they're mean? gonna call and in you go. and say, "Can I have that?" Footage? Right. Paris Goble with Justin Bieber. Right. Same thing. Right. You know what I mean? You, his stuff is being played all over Revolt. Yeah. He got to work with Diddy. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I just think that there's a level yeah. at which we should be producing, like you said, using these people to the best of their ability. Right. I think one video that always stands out to me, um, Aaliyah Murphy and Ashley Cruz's video, they did a... Uh, oh, was, was it uh, Wild Thoughts? Yes. Yes. That was insane. Yeah. But if you're going to do a concept, then that is the concept. They had drone shots. They had a car. They mm -hmm. had, like, they looked amazing. Their makeup was done. It wasn't just steps. It wasn't just flat on. Mm -hmm. It was movement. Their bodies looked great. You right. had the perfect angles. That's what you should be shooting yeah. for. You have to think beyond Instagram. Right, yes. You have to think beyond tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You have to think 10 years from now. How do I want this to look? What is it that I want myself to be portrayed as when this comes out? Right. Am I just putting out my content or am I really putting out an idea? Do right. I want there to shape go. people's there you minds? Go. There you go. And so there we go. That's the positive that I feel like I want people to take out of this. We're not discussing this to say, oh, New yeah. York's whack and they're not creative. But the people that are the key players in the industry when it comes to the directors and the the uh, people that are hiring the choreographers and the visionaries, they want to know, do you have a vision? Right. That's what it comes can down you, to. Can your vision help amplify mine as yes, a creative director? Yes, exactly. So yes. when she says think beyond Instagram, beyond tomorrow, beyond the sex, it's like the industry saturated. And with, with the resources that we all have and the marketing platforms, it's like they want to see, do you have a vision? Right. Are you innovative? How far are you thinking? You know what I mean? Versus just showing me choreography. There's so many people that we can hire and do choreography. Right. We exactly. want visions. We want people that can come in and really take our project up a notch. So right. that's the reason why um, we are going so heavily on this topic.